Hey guys, so I'm going, so we're doing a bit of a different content today. We're doing voiceover content. So I'm going to be reading a post from r slash pro revenge. And the title of this post is former manager made my life hell and I finally got her fired. And we shall start now. I was desperate to join a new job after my husband and I were both laid off last year. When I was offered a new role, I knew it would be a step down from what I was doing, but the manager and the, the team seemed great, and the part has not changed. However, since my manager, Gary, was so busy, he basically offloaded me to another manager, Jane. I was supposed, I was supposed to be the connection point between my team and Jane. But it quickly became Jane micromanaging me. She would ask me to work through lunch, move and cancel vacation days, call at 11 p.m. on weekends, and order me around on phone calls. She also made nasty comments about my weight and said I was too big for my race. The list of personal slights so long. The list of personal slights so long that it filled three pages. I would talk back to her, and she did not like that, and that provoked her more. I only stayed because we needed to pay the bills. Finally, I had a mental breakdown on a Friday afternoon after she yelled at me for something trivial about scheduling a meeting without including someone from her team who I didn't know about. I was dealing with a family tragedy and couldn't take it anymore. I told Gary about the situation with Jane, and he was sympathetic. Sympath <sighs> I sympathetic. Sympathic. I don't know. Sympathetic. We're gonna go with that. And not at all surprised, considering half her team quit. He immediately offered to move me to a different team under him. I was thrilled. Well, turns out, going to the new team didn't help. Jane continued to order me around from afar. When I ignored her emails, she came to my desk one day and started loudly talking about how I am not qualified for this role. Gary overheard and finally told her off. But the verbal abuse did not stop. After. Where is it? After two months there, I abruptly wrote my reg resignation letter and st stapled the list of Jane's offensive comments and CC'd everybody, everyone. Gary offered a bunch of accommodations to try to keep me, but seeing how she was still provoking me from afar, I said the only way for me to stay would be for her to go, and he did not have the authority to let her go. Her manager was in a different country, and despite several HR complaints from at least five people, nothing was done. So I left loudly and without a shame, telling everyone exactly why I was leaving. Times were very bad for three months. There were nights what there were nights we would eat slices of bread so we could pay the mortgage and emergency expenses from a health crisis and the funeral. Even after he found a job, we were still catching up on bills and still are. I spent months applying to five to ten roles per day, sometimes over twenty. Last month, I saw a public memo about a big shot from a former company joining the company I just left. I used to work with this guy closely and texted him a congrats. Let me know if you need any insights on the new place. We had a quick call where I told him some ins and outs, where I thought they could innovate. After the call, he asked me to join the team as his chief or st of staff. I accepted. Imagine Jane's shock when we had our first, first all-hands call. All the VPs and above were asked to welcome the new Big Shot in a giant conference room. In Big Shot's speech, he breezed over that I'll be his chief of staff along with a few key names. I now sat at two levels above Jane and apparently within the three months 
Within the three months I was not there, the other half of her team turned over. Every single person left. Gary was excited for me and said all nice things. However, Jane took the classless route and sent Big Shot an email about how I'm an unqualified idiot. That I used to work for her, how I tried to get her fired, and that she suspects I lied to get ahead. She didn't even try to fake. She didn't even try to be fake nice. Big Shot forwarded me, forwarded me her email and asked what this was about. I was nervous and excited. Little did Jane know, I was a director at Big Shot's competitor company, and was already a level above her. So two levels and a big leap. And I worked with him for five years. I had an hour call about Big Sh with Big Shot and told him she was bad for the company culture and was a nasty person in general. But the evidence he needed was Gary confirming that her whole team turned over. My prior res resignation letter was still sitting on my desktop when I logged in upon return, and a few other nasty emails she sent her recent staff, which they were happy to share with us. Big Shot fired Jane on Friday. That was our first post. I have no idea where we are. What are we? Six minutes in? All right, we got four minutes. Since I only got ten minute footage, so we'll read one more. This one is titled Revenge on the Movie Producer. Please allow me to note well in advance this story is not mine. In fact, it is a rather popular story in a town I once lived in, Savannah, Georgia and centers around one homeowner who got royally annoyed with a movie producer. There will be a note at the end about the fellow story this is about for those interested. <clears throat> okay, so first and foremost, when movie producers are looking for places to set a movie that takes places in colonial or even 1800 cities in the U.S., do... To the sheer number of parks and wide roads and period houses, they will often select Savannah, Georgia. They'll pull all they'll pull all the Spanish moss out of the trees or trim it back. Pour dirt on the roads around school. Pour dirt on the roads around the squares and effectively backdate that part of the city to fit most any place. Mo fit. Effectively backdate that part of the city to fit any place, most any place. Okay. Even up to some having, even up to some having used the area as a settling, setting for early, for places like early Washington DC, and even places in Britain or France Typically, when producers do this, they will pay each homeowner's each homeowner owner whose house is used as the background labor a couple thousand dollars for the licensing to do so. That will be important later. Trust me. They issue some rules, like no electric lights being visible, and not coming out of any door that faces the street. And you have to move your automobiles away from the drive if you have a drive. Well, in in 1979, a producer from came from Hollywood with the intention of using Savannah for that every for that very purpose. Specifically, the producer was from one of the big three-letter TV channels and was working on making a made-for-TV movie talking about the events after the assassination of Lincoln and the subsequent accusations of the doctor presents, presents at his death. <clears throat> this is really hard to read because this is very long for me. The production went to the city to seek permission and then sent an announcement out to up out to each of the homeowners telling them of the various days that shoot oh no we're out of time 
All right, we're out of time. I am sorry if you listened this far. Hold on.